going back to that Zoom question again, what can AppNeta bring to the table that is especially suited for me dealing with voice, video, and collaboration tool performance? People are on Teams, people are on Zoom, et cetera. How do I get into the, the, the guts of what's going on with those apps when well, there's there issues? There's so many layers to that answer because you know we started, when we founded the company in 2011, we decided to focus on real-time apps first. The reason being, they're harder. You know, data type applications are more tolerant of bad network performance. They tend to operate at TCP IP level versus UDP or, or other layers in the network. And so uh, how about this? We'll each take one. I'll take the first one. So number one, data packets and voice packets behave differently in the network. They're smaller, they're prioritized differently. So the first thing we do is when we do our active methodology, we're actually crafting voice packets and we're putting real voice packets, including SIP stream out on the network to understand both the, the, the data plane and the control plane, are they operating right? So that's number one. Adam, what's another thing we do? Yeah, well, uh, the four KPIs that any vendor, whether it's Zoom or Microsoft, uh, will tell you is you've got to have capacity or sufficient bandwidth available for the session, whether you're doing standard or high definition, and you've got to have the latency loss jitter. In some cases, if you're going over a private network, QoS configured to support the uh, the application. Uh, so. Um, there are different thresholds that are appropriate to each vendor, but the key theme is that you need to measure those four KPIs. And if you do it with a speed test or any test once an hour or only when there's a problem, you're never going to know what the reason is for Zoom popping up saying you're having network difficulty. Um, you know, it's uh, so you have to take matters into your own hands and you've got to understand if you've got the infrastructure performance between you and Zoom or you and Teams to, to, to deliver. I'll say the third thing, and I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this uh, with this group because I'm not sure if there's any religion here, but you know, one of the important things specifically around voice is to create a meaningful metric, right? So like what is good latency? What is good jitter? What is good loss when it comes to voice per performance? And so one of the things that we seek to do is to simplify that from a metric standpoint. We actually generate MOS score. Um, as a real-time metric so that you can set your threshold and your reporting on MOS score as opposed to taking into account all of these variables that you might have for different workers in different parts of the world and their different delivery, you still now have this sort of uniform way to look at it across the enterprise. Now that's important because MOS is very different. So if you've got a, a say so a hosted telephony solution that you're using, you might accept a MOS score inside mainland USA of four. But if you've got uh, call center operators working out of Indonesia, you might be very content to have a MOS score of three. So your learning has to, that's a very broad, very brutal sort yeah. of, it could even be like, if you're in rural America, you might accept a MOS score of two because some of the right. infrastructure in, you know, parts of, of the world is pretty, gets a bit, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. The last mile is a barbed wire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bring back so, X25. Bring back X25. Everybody's expectations, right? <laughs> That's when, right. These, when the iPhone came out, everybody's expectation for toll quality MOS score came down. It used mm -hmm. to be if we were below four, people were screaming. You know, you, you get an average of 3.8 to 3.6 every day when you make a, a cell phone call. And yeah. it, it really goes into what does the business need, to John's point, yeah. it is is acceptable or not That's why i always make fun of people who say call quality has to be perfect it's a fun it's the funniest thing ever if yeah. call quality mattered mobile phones would never be in the wouldn't exist you know right <laughs> so. so part of the issue we're talking about are applications delivered from the cloud we've got a, um, a, a an audience question is AppNeta actively working or integrating with cloud providers to have enhanced metrics currently once a packet reaches the cloud fabric it enters into a pandora's box and we all know that what was inside Pandora's box was just uh, agony and sorrow, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, that's also a multi-part answer. And uh, the short version is uh, we're, we're very fortunate that, that three out of the four largest cloud providers today actually depend upon AppNeta internally to help them run their service as well as understand how the end users are experiencing their service. But the answer to that question specifically is also it depends on how deep you want to go into your cloud provider to understand. Do you do you want to understand the performance right down to the virtual machine that's running your host? Do you want to understand a generic service safe Teams and be able to understand what's my general Teams performance globally? At which point you can leverage AppNeta has endpoints set up already in, within Azure to let you understand team performance. 
So it depends on how deep you want visibility, but the, the overall answer is yes, you can see as deep into the cloud as you need to for your business. So Matt, let me have you qualify that a little bit. So for example, um, Azure and AWS, Google, they all have huge internal networks. And I think maybe this gets to, uh, to, to the question a little bit in that once my packet leaves the internet and heads into that cloud provider's gargantuan and, and usually global fabric, do I have any insight into what's going on at that point? Absolutely, from a layer three perspective, you're gonna see the, the insight all the way to the endpoint. And again, this is where it comes down to, we partner with businesses to understand, do you want to understand that end-to-end -end connection all the way to the virtual host? Maybe it's an AWS, it's an instance, and that instance is critical to your applications, and you actually can instrument AppNeta right using container technology right in the same instance that's running your app. So you're, you're sitting side by side using the very low overhead architecture and understanding the performance from the same point where your app is working all the way out to the end user on the other side to where it's being consumed and every layer three hop in between. Okay, every layer hop three hop in between. So if I'm bouncing around inside an availability zone, let's say, I might have some clue if there's something happening in the cloud provider itself that is causing excessive latency or packet loss, let's say. Yeah, John, I don't know if we've got a screen share that shows uh, one of our, our, our route diagrams, but one of the things that really started to happen five or six years ago, as our customers started deploying us more and more in the public cloud, was the, the number of layer three hops that shifted into what might look like a LAN when it was really started part of, part of the WAN went up astronomically. And we used to think that 20 or 25 layer three hops was a lot. We'll see 2X that number of hops before it ever leaves the cloud provider today. It's not uncommon yeah, to see I, 70 layer three hops on an end-to-end -end connection when there's a cloud provider involved with the first 20 or 30 being inside an AZ, for example. Well, we know that um, some of the biggest consumers of fiber are these cloud operators. You know, they're laying fiber down everywhere and they're using the internet as an on-ramp where they will any cast an IP address to get you onto their network as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. And then they can control that communication on their own infrastructure that they own, which you think, oh, I'm just hopping over to Ashburn. And you know, well, no, not necessarily. It can be more complicated than that uh, to get you where be you're ingressing trying to go, at Ashburn, so. but you might be hopping across, you know, you know, halfway around the world to get to where your data is located. Yeah. Um, so here's another audience question that I think applies. I don't know where to put it in. So let's put it in now. Um, let's say I've detected some sort of an issue that's going to impact an end user. Is there a, I don't even know that I'd want to do this, but let's say I did want to do this. Could I alert the end user and saying, hey, your Zoom performance is going to be terrible right now because of this thing that we know about? That's a really good question. I think the, um, it, it depends on the notification um, configuration that you would set up. Uh, typically, uh, users can subscribe to certain kinds of notifications uh, in notification um, intervals like time of day, day of week, and so on. Uh, generally, if the network team is responsible for the tooling, uh, they would, beyond um, having the end user's machine instrumented, typically the end user doesn't play a key role in the troubleshooting. That's what we find in, in a lot of our organizations. Um, now, if that were to change and someone needed to have actually their own notification profile, uh, we could certainly make that happen. Yeah, and I would think I would add to that, Adam, there's, there's the dimension of do I want to alert them when something's bad or do I want to give so I want to have IT be a partner with the user community and say, hey, I, I want to establish credibility within IT. So do I potentially let end users go check a dashboard someplace to say, hey, is am I the only one having this problem? Is that happening elsewhere? And of course, we have several different dashboards that can be shared out in many different formats to even let a non-AppNeta platform user log in and see the status, or it can be pushed out via other dashboards that already exist within the business so they can go to the workflow where they're common or used to going to see the status. And on the alert side, one of the things we've seen increasingly as organization sizes go up is there's many different alert types that Adam hinted at that come out of the platform, but generally we're now sending those to secondary systems where the routing and processing to decide which ticket and which alert goes where on which, which operating principle is handled by somebody else, is handled by another upstream system. And that system could indeed make a decision that, oh, this is a, 
a critical team working on a business critical project that's due in three weeks, I want to let them know they're having a bad Zoom connection right now and they could route the mm -hmm. ticket that way. But usually that's not done within AppNeta. Usually it's upstream routing that's that's handled by some ITSM platform. Yeah, because the help desk needs to have visibility of that to see that there's been some auto. Because if they ring in and say, what are you going to do about it? They're going to go do about what? So you actually right. want to be integrated. <laughs> you know, they're going like, uh, they're saying, like, well, we just got all these alerts saying that, you know, because people are incompetent and they don't think about anybody but themselves, you know, so.